So building a fiberglass fuel tank. So first thing we have to go to the store to get all the materials to do this. So we go down to Jonesport. We go over to King's where we can get the resin, the boards, the rollers, everything we need. Once everything's loaded in the truck, we got to go over and get some tools. So we got to load up all the stuff. You can see the resin in the jugs and off we go. So we went down to King's, we got the fiberglass, we got the resin, we got everything we needed. Um, we're going to make a makeshift table. Um, we went, we got the tools and stuff we're going to need for this project. And now Jeremy's changing real quick because when you work with fiberglass resin, it gets all your clothes, so you don't want to wear anything too nice. Um, so we got to go back to the garage now. Now we got to build this and we're going to be making this tank here. So. It's starting to snow. I don't think we're supposed to get a lot of snow, but it is snowing. So, on onwards. So now we get to the garage. We gotta try to get everything out of the truck into the garage before everything gets covered in snow. And once we get that all done, we gotta make a makeshift table. So, being a fisherman, there's always traps kicking around or crates. So, we get a couple boxed in uh, lobster traps to make a table. You know. Two on each side, put some boards in between it, and then we put this board on top of it. So now we got a table to work off from an extra one. And then that's the K light. What we're doing is putting on top. There's another table in the distance that we'll be doing most of this on, searching for a couple tools. And then what we're doing is putting mold release on the K light. And what that's going to do is it gets coated up really nice and thick. So once the resin gets onto it, the fiberglass, this will pop off and it won't stick to that. But it has to have this releasing mold agent on top of that so the resin doesn't stick to it. So both of them have to get covered up and now we're gonna use the electric scissors to cut some glass. This makes it a lot easier to cut this up into manageable sizes so you can maneuver this a little better. So we're gonna lay the fiberglass out on the K-Light and then we're gonna measure this out and make sure we have the right size. A little extra, not less, but extra on this. So once we get the first one, now all we have to do is just keep doing this multiple times till we get all of them cut. A lot of this is a lot of repetitive to this that it just has to get done over and over to get enough material ready to go to actually start making the tank itself. So you can see the electric scissors make it a lot easier. Just cuts right through it. So use the scissors on to the next one and this is what the resin comes into just so you guys have an idea and the resin gets poured in and then mixed with a hardener and you can see the resin going in and this is polyester resin for those that may ask that question so the polyester resin goes into it now the hardener is going in and now this is going to have to get mixed up so it gets mixed up and now what's going to happen is we get the roller with the brush and then start coating over the wax mold release right there. So now that the resin's being applied on top of the mold release, this has to be covered very well for the first layer of fiberglass to go onto it. So you see us going over this, and we're missing a little spot, so I hold it up. Jeremy's going to come around and get that resin underneath that. So everything that this is going on to has resin underneath of it. So... As we lay this out, we're just paying attention to make sure everything's under the resin. Then the fiberglass gets laid onto it and more resin to come over and over. Resin, hardener, mix, repeat over and over. But so once the fiberglass is on there, the resin has to be really well coated onto that. And then once that's done, then the next layer goes switching between fiberglass to a combo mat back and forth. So to stiffen this up, so there's four layers to start initially on each board is what I'm going to call this for the time being. And we worked the air bubbles out just to make it easier. And then more resin goes on top of this. It's taking a couple minutes to smooth out the air bubbles and just make sure everything's lined up. Speeds up the process because once everything gets wet and resin, it's very hard to move all this. It's sticking together. So I'm going to hyperlapse this a little bit so we can speed through the process of this because it is quite the process. So you just got to keep working the resin in over and over, making sure there's no air bubbles in it and making sure everything is thick and coated heavily. So once everything gets covered with resin and everything like that, 
and more resin and hardener mixed and stirred to keep on going to make sure everything is covered correctly. It's time for the next layer. So once again, we want to make sure there's good placement on this, make sure the air is worked out of it and back to coating it with resin again and on to the next layer once again. So it is pretty repetitive, everything. So we try to use every drop of the resin, pour it on there and then mix up some more and keep going. So there it is. Looks good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch this out. So we're going to use this board, slide the K light over it, move it over, grab the other one and switch this all out. So we have a table that's a little higher and easier for us to work on just to make our backs a little more comfortable. So this has already been covered in the mold release and we're going to do the exact same thing over again. So layer one is done onto the second layer. Coat it up again onto layer three, coat it up again, make sure everything's covered nice and good, and onto the fourth layer, coat it all up, and that's pretty much the process to get everything kind of ready to go. Now this all has to just dry, so little trick is to take a heat gun and do the corner just a little bit. That will help speed the process up. Don't get it too hot. Or you'll have bigger problems. So we're going to let this dry up. We're going to run up, get some lunch, get some food in us, and go back and start to measure everything up. So every measurement on this is to be placed just perfectly. So there's very minimum waste to this. So everything has to be the right size, the right dimensions, and everything for that. And if there's overhang, you want to make sure... The tape measure is sitting inside the layers and not off of the side if there's some extra. Then once it's dried off, it pops off really easy just like that. And it pops right off that K-Light. You can see me sliding right around. So now what we got to do is just move that off the side, get the K-Light off, do the same thing with the other one. And then we got to get time ready to cut this up and... Uh, Get the pieces ready to go. So we get the saw out, start cutting on the lines that we've made. And once everything gets cut out to shape, there really is very little waste. You can actually see the amount of waste off the sheet. And now what we're going to do is use wood chunks and some hot glue to kind of frame this up a little bit to get the shape of what we need. So you can pop this all off and it's a lot easier to kind of get the shape of what you need to do this. So... By using the hot glue and the wood chunks, just kind of keep working in the shape of this to get the dimensions we need so it's easier to get the side measurements off that. And just go right down the cracks, hot glue it. And what that does is it bonds this together enough to hold this into place so you can get the shape as you see here. Then once everything's kind of squared up, we ended up adding some additional ones on the side to keep it so when we flipped it over, so we can actually measure the sides of this, as you'll see here just very shortly on the next clip. So we take one of the other pieces on the other scrap piece, hold it up to it, take a Sharpie, measure it around it, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut that out to shape. So, and then hot glue it to the side of it so it holds the shape of it and kind of see looking inside the tank what it's looking like right now. So, do the next side, Sharpie, measure, cut, glue it. And then I kind of missed a little bit because I had some issues with my wood boiler at this point. So Jeremy kind of continued on. I came back through. but So what he did is he took fiberglass, layered everything up. And then later in the afternoon, I met back up with him. And you can see he's coated around all the edges with fiberglass, small strips to strengthen the shape of this so it holds very well. And it's strong and ruggedly built. And I'll go around the side so you kind of see the overlap of this right here. Shows you kind of how everything is kind of holding everything into place. So that's the outside of this. Once that's done, the inside has to be done too as well. So the baffles inside get cut up, fit in to make sure everything fits before everything gets covered in resin in there too. Again, so you can see there's two little spaces on the side that allows the fluid to come from left to right. So it works like a fuel tank should then some fiberglass is cut up it's wetting up through resin soaked up and then it's applied around the edges the seams of it 
So it builds the strength, it holds the fluid that is going to be in there, which this will be a diesel tank. And the process just continues um, over and over until everything is set right up there, back to the electric scissors, making that cut. I know everyone loves to see this, so um, good little strips right there just so it's easy, manageable. Everything kind of gets torn to where it's going to go because each piece is going to be a little bit different. Overlapping, making sure the seams are covered well. And doing it on the table prior to going in there makes it a lot easier. Um, then there's a little lip that was made on this just so there was easy to mount onto it. That also has to be strengthened around the tank itself, as you can kind of see here what's going on. And being wet, it's got a little more play to it. And from there, then the baffles go in. That gets put in there. He's using what's called an air roller right now to work out any air out of the glass itself. So it's nice and tight. And now the top is put onto it. And this is a pretty cool technique right here. So he rips the sides of this. So it's going around every corner of this. So it folds it. So you can see then it tucks around that after it's already been placed right there. So what that does is it really bonds very well that way. Everything is going to be grinded down so everything's smooth, looks nice and clean. But by doing this, it strengthens this up without having to put a bunch of layers on. Um, even though there is a bunch of layers on it, it's just this is a really cool technique to do to get everything there. So I moved the camera a little bit so you can kind of see this technique a little better, but... It's basically kind of just folding one over on top of another over another and it just really strengthens the corner very well by doing it this way so once the seams are all done now it's time to go over everything once again on a really good layer all around now you see all the fiberglass is torn now and what that's doing is making a feather feathering it into it so it doesn't have lines and stuff in there then everything gets sanded down, cleaned up, so it can be gel coated. And that's basically the same principle. And during the gel coating, we went live, so I didn't really get a good footage of this. But it's the same principle as the resin. It gets mixed. Um, everything gets covered right up with a brush. Just pretty simple off of that. And there's a sight glass in the middle of that, so you'll be able to see how much fluid's in there. And then the top corner is left with no gel coat, so when everything gets drilled up for the fittings and everything on the boat. So that's kind of how the fuel tank went. Hopefully you learned a little something along the way.